Hi everyone, I want to make a different kind of video today. This is not got anything to do with characters, this is more like uh, scene rendering, specifically environment renders, typically outdoor type of scenes, larger scenes, things where you want more of a sense of scale. So I've got a couple of notes here, and, I, and by the way I'm making this video just because I see a lot of newer, less experienced people in the Blender community making these mistakes. And it's a couple of really common mistakes. So let's just read here um, when and when not to use blur. So that's the first point I want to talk about today. And then understanding the difference between wide angle and telephoto lenses. So just two points, two things I think that if people think about them a bit more when they're making their, their scenes and their renders, uh, will help them a lot. Like, I mean, really, it'll, it'll make a big difference if you do this right. So, got some examples here, and we'll start off with the, the ones that I think uh, are are doing it wrong. So, most of these are from Blender Artists, and there's one here from ArtStation. And then we'll go on to the ones that I think are done right. These are ArtStation here. So, um, first one here is an image by this person. Sorry, can't pronounce your name. I don't want to try, because I'll probably butcher it. But this is on ArtStation, and let's just open this up. So immediately we can see we've got an interesting scene here. We've got a lot of good um, good stuff, good stuff happening here. Lighting is not bad at all. Um, texturing, modeling, all of that's pretty good. It's great, but it's all quite um, sort of. I don't want to say ruined, but it's all let down by this massive, massive, massive amount of blur in the scene. And you'll notice if you go look at photos, that uh, real world photos and stuff, that you won't easily find an image like this. There's not many cameras that take images like this, just of a typical street scene. Um, unless the cameraman is uh, doing something like this on purpose or something weird is going on, you won't find many images like this because the nature of an image like this requires that you use a wide angle, wider angle lens and wide angle lenses do not um, have this this amount of blur. Again, uh, in most cameras, in most cases, like 99% of cases. So you'll notice here what this blur does is that it just, it makes everything feel like a miniature, doesn't it? I don't know if you've seen photos of miniatures in, in, in older films and so on, but you can always, almost always tell that they're miniatures because of the uh, especially on cheaper productions, I guess, because of all that blur. Because if you use a wide angle lens and you bring it really close to like a small thing, like on a tabletop, then that's when you'll get the blur. And that's why this feels like a small scene. It feels like a toy city, doesn't it? Um, I, I used to not know why I felt these scenes felt so weird, but now I know it's like, it feels like a miniature. It feels wrong. There's something happening here with space that isn't right. And you can tell. So, first point there, um, understand when and when not to use blur. And this is definitely a case where you do not want to use blur. And in, I want to say 99% of cases where you're using a wider lens, you want to avoid blur, basically. Um, and if you don't understand what a wide lens is and a narrow lens, don't worry, we'll get to that. Um, let's just go through these ranges real quick. Okay, so here's a, a different kind of image, also a urban type of render. And we've got the tunnel here with the rails. And the texturing, modeling, and lighting in this is okay, it's decent. Uh, the lighting could probably use some work, it's a bit soft, but either way, the biggest problem I think with this scene is the camera lens, um, the lens this person is using. So if we go back to those two points I made, understanding the difference between wide angle and telephoto lenses. Well, this is, um, I, I can't, I don't know for sure what kind of lens this is using, but this is, I want to say, definitely a, a longer telephoto lens. Um, and that just means it's zoomed more in. So it, more of the the, the outside, the, the space on the sides here is, is cropped out. Um, actually, on second thoughts, I should probably talk about lenses right now before we continue. Let's just go here. I googled it. I just typed in here uh, wide angle versus telephoto 
And if you just Google this, you'll see what I mean. So here's a cool image I found that illustrates very well what I mean. Um, wide angle here on the left versus telephoto. So exact same location, same building, but the wide angle makes it look completely different. So if we just, there's a little illustration that I saw down here. Here's a, diff here, here's a little bit more of a clear image of what I mean. So the wide angle, it's, it's just, um, it's zoomed outwards more, it's zoomed back, like it just captures a wider, like a panorama almost. And wide angle lenses can be anything from like, uh, like it says here, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, all the way up to 35 millimeters. So uh, it's just like a very, very wide angle. And I think the default lens width in Vayner is like 35, which is a little close for me. I, I usually, for larger scenes, I like to go back even a bit more to like 20 millimeters even. And in some cases, even more like extreme. And then, of course, you've got your telephoto lens, which is it's, it's zoomed in. It's basically like a telescope, right? And what that means is you lose a lot of the, like, it crops out a lot of the image on the sides here. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's basically. I, I'm I'm by no means a photography expert. I I don't even do photography. Just this is um, something that I picked up uh, at some point. That just you have to understand which lens to use when you're doing like a, uh, a larger scene. So I'm not saying you can't use telephoto lenses for landscape photography or you can't use telephoto lenses for larger scenes. You absolutely can, and we've got I've got a couple of, of examples here that we'll go through that illustrate that. But just as a general rule of thumb, and especially when you're still learning, you really want to use a wide angle lens for a landscape and a bigger scene, and you want to use a telephoto lens for like portraits and and smaller, like more intimate shots. Like like here's a good example of when you have to use a telephoto, right? This is a this one here on the right is you is a telephoto, and uh, the one on the left is a wide angle, so it's, it, it distorts the face. So so this lens here would work a lot better. For, for for like landscape photography, um, it just it just makes you feel like you're like more present inside the shot. But so yeah, that's the difference between wide angle and telephoto. If you're wondering, I've got a practical example in Blender as well, which will which we'll go through in in a moment. Um, let's go through these renders. We've done the tunnel one. Okay, here's um here's a different one. Uh, the the tunnel one was done by Rankin. Uh, I should probably credit these artists uh, and this person. I can't pronounce their name. Um, okay, so the next one here is done by Carl385 uh, on Blender Artists. And all of these renders, by the way, are from different skill levels. These people got, are from beginner to quite experienced. They just all have the same pair of problems that I saw. But so Carl's got an interesting scene here. Uh, it's a bit noisy. It's got a few issues. It's a good attempt. I think Carl might be a beginner um, still, but... Biggest problem with the scene is that it's got a wide lens, but it's got a lot of blur. So those two things don't go together. If you've got a wider lens, you generally have less blur. So, um, I, I, and obviously I understand why he blurred it, like the background here. Um, he obviously wanted to sort of obscure the, the, the low quality background image a bit. But in this case, it, the, the render is definitely a lot weaker for it. So I would say just remove the entire background Get rid of the blur and just put some fog in there. It'll it'll probably look better. So um, yeah, wide angle, lots of blur um, on an outdoor scene doesn't work very well. Next image, let's go to this one, and this is by Cynic R9 or Kinic, sorry. And this is um this is well modeled and well textured and well lit. All of this is, this is a fine scene. This is a good render. If, if you show this to 99% of artists and people, they say, mm, yeah, it looks great, but it doesn't look amazing. And one of the problems is the use of the camera, I think, in my personal opinion. So again, we've got the blur in the background. There's a little, a little bit of blur. It's not terrible and it's not, it's definitely not jarring like some of the others we looked at. But the biggest problem here is, the framing, and when I say framing, I mean the use of the lens. So this is a closer lens. It's got a, I would say this is probably a 60 to 80 millimeter lens, which means it's quite zoomed in, and it just doesn't help the scene much. Um, 
one of my first suggestions for if I were to, to give this guy advice would be to widen out the camera lens, okay? So just to, to, to use a lens more like this. And again, we'll get into Blender and we'll do a practical example, so don't worry about that. And I'll explain how it works. So definitely good scene, but it can improve quite a lot. So um, next image. And this is a scene that's more subjective. This this one you might be fine with this, um, depending on like what your tastes are and everything. Uh, this person definitely has a, a bit more experience with texturing and modeling. They're they're pretty good. They're definitely not a beginner. Um, but when it comes to framing and use of the camera, again, it does suffer a little bit. So this is, I think this is a wider lens, slightly wider, but it's not wide enough in my opinion. And I think the framing is wrong. So I can't point out exactly what's wrong with this image for me. I just think it does suffer to a certain extent uh, of uh, this problem of um, the lens being not wide enough and also to an extent uh, the blur in the background. So if you if you take a photo like this with your phone or with a camera in real life, you, you probably get a, something quite close to this, right? You will get a bit of blur because the subject, this car here, is very close uh to the to the camera so naturally that means the background will be blurred a bit but still if you use a different lens width and a different angle you could get rid of the blur in the background and still have this blur in the foreground while still keeping the focus on the subject it's possible and you can do it and uh, i think just a bit more thought into how the camera was used here could have made it a lot better i can't prove it it's subjective with this one um, but that's just my feeling on this one so let's go to the next one here. And this is a classic, uh, what I call the miniature syndrome, uh, which I just actually came up with five minutes before making this video. Uh, miniature syndrome, just like it feels like a miniature, right? Because of all the blur. Like it feels like this was made by, by hand, like a tiny little tent on a tabletop and then a camera was shoved in really close. And it's got this huge amount of blur and then the bokeh, bokeh effect here. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. But yeah, it's just, it's not the right combination of lens width and blur. So I would, I would probably keep the lens width. It does look like a bit more of a telephoto lens, but I would bring down the blur absolutely because it just feels like a very miniature s sort of scene, which is fine if the, if the person making this uh, were going for that. But um, I have a feeling that was not the original intent. And so just understanding that the blur is what is making your scene feel a little bit weird. Like a lot of people wonder why the scale in their scenes feels off. It's, this is one of the reasons, too much blur. Um, and in some cases, the wrong camera lens width. Uh, by the way, this one is made by Greek. And for the most part, I like it. It's a good scene, lighting's good, texturing's all there. Um, so Greek Matthew, very nice render there. Uh, and this one, I should credit the the artist as well, uh, Lightbringer23 um, on uh, on Blender Artists. Very very nice scene, great texturing, modeling is all there. It's all good. Um, just a little bit more thought, perhaps, to the camera. And then we've got uh, another one here by uh, this person, J D W R Banek uh, on Blender Artists. And this suffers from the, from, from the opposite prob problem from the previous one, where this one has too much blur. Uh, well, I want not the opposite problem, really. It's just a different problem. It's uh, the camera lens is wrong. So this one has got no blur, which is actually a good thing, but it's got, it's got a, a lens that is just way too zoomed in. It feels like whoever took this photo was sitting like across the lake, like a couple of kilometers away with a really, really long telephoto lens and just zoomed all the way in and took this photo, which is fine. I'm just saying like, what if you were to place your camera above the lake and just widen out the lens to sort of capture all the great scenery, you know? It, it does mean obviously a little bit more modeling work, a little bit more work setting up your scene, but it will look a lot better, trust me. If you use a wider lens, maybe like a 25 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter, uh, 40 millimeter lens, like just try and uh, try and let the image quote unquote breathe a little bit better. Um, this is just way too zoomed in, feels cramped, right? 
And again, we'll we'll do a practical example um, in Blender. Um, let's just get through these. Um, so here's here's a very good scene by Pietro Ciovaro. I think he's on YouTube. He makes some pretty good tutorials. This is an older image of his, posted three years ago. So he was probably still learning the ins and outs of how to use a camera. But this is really well done. Um, good texturing, modeling, lighting, it's all good. Um, but again, it feels of the scaling. The scale, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but for me, definitely, the scale feels off. It feels like a miniature. And the, the biggest reason, the single biggest reason for that is definitely all the excessive amount of blur in the back. Because you'll notice this scene is actually quite a quite a wide angle lens, isn't it? This is probably a 35 millimeter lens, 20, 25 perhaps. It's quite wide. It's good for such a scene. Just the blur doesn't fit with such a wide lens. So immediately that makes it feel like a miniature, like it was built out of a tabletop. And um, uh, yeah, so it's a weird blur lens width combination that just doesn't work. So for this one, I would definitely keep the lens, uh, the focal length the same, but just lose all the blur, like lose everything. Um, doesn't need it, it doesn't, the image is actually weaker for it. Um, the temptation is always there for beginners and even more experienced people to use blur because it kind of looks pretty, it makes things look pretty, but it can instantly ruin an outdoor uh, scene, um, environment scene like this. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of these, let's go to a few scenes on ArtStation that I really liked, that I feel have done, uh, have done all the right things. Um, so we'll start here, and I have a collection here on ArtStation called Environment Lens Examples. Uh, this is the link, it's a public collection, so you can probably come and check it out as well. It's just a few images in here, just a few examples. But um, first one here, we've got an interior scene actually, and it's uh, it's done by this person, Katerina Reika. Um, good scene, it's great, it's all... It's all um, well modeled and textured and lit and everything but definitely what really helps the scene and what makes it feel great is just the lens angle so you can usually tell just by looking at an image that the lens angle is um is pretty wide this is probably like a 35 millimeter which these lines are really pointing outwards towards the corners of the image right where um where if you look at one of these other ones, like this one, for example, you can instantly see it's a longer lens because the because the lines point a lot more inwards, like like straighter. Okay, this one is actually quite, but you can still tell it's especially on this side that um, they're definitely not that wide. So you can usually tell this by looking. Really good image. The the the, the scene here, the, the the lens here is the right lens for this shot. Definitely. So next one here, uh, Antoin Kolinon. Sorry, I can't pronounce these people's name. But this is a um, very good scene again. And this is actually, I think, a longer lens. This might be a, like a 200 millimeter. It's quite long. But it, this is just because I wanted to show you that you can use a longer lens in certain e examples, in certain cases, um, especially if you like really want to create the feeling that you're really far away, right? Um, it's actually, for a scene like this, it's difficult to tell what lens the person used. But uh, I want to say this is probably like a really long one, like a 200 mil, because, um, yeah, it just feels like that. I don't know. But anyway, um, again, notice on both of these, there's there's no blur. There's no, no blurring. This is a vast scene. This is absolutely enormous and there's no blur. You don't need blur. If you add any kind of blur to this, it's going to ruin the image. It's pretty much going to tank the image because um, the reality is if you take a photo like this um, with a real camera, there won't be any blur. There's just, there's no reason for it to exist in an image like this. So um, again, I don't know much about photography. I'm actually quite stupid when it comes to photography, but um, yeah. So, so the, these are just my thoughts on this. Here's a great one by Tyler Smith, and I recommend you follow this guy on ArtStation. He's really good. But uh, really wide lens he's using here, and he's always good at 
capturing a sense of scale and the, the single biggest reason that this scene feels so so awesome is just the fact that he's using the the correct camera so if he used a closer camera like a like a telephoto type camera longer focal length then this would feel a lot worse but just just, just these way, the way these lines point outwards towards towards the corners of the image you can instantly tell it's a very wide lens it feels open it feels um like it breathes and there's zero blur there's no blur um the only thing he did do to obscure the background a bit was a bit of volumetric fog which also helps the scale of the scene so definitely if you want to try and obscure the background a bit uh try to use the volumetric fog and mist effects instead of, instead of blur on, on a scene like this Okay, next image. Um, uh, this one by this person. Can't pronounce that, sorry. Um, so, again, wide lens, very wide, no blur. Uh, and, yeah, it just it just works very well. Um, just because it feels more like it was taken with a real camera. So, really wide lens there. Uh, here's another one by Victor. Can't pronounce that, sorry. But uh, check them out on ArtStation, really cool stuff. And this is this feels more like a closer lens, like a telephoto, but still the framing is right. Um, like, it, like if he were to focus just on these two characters here with like one of the buildings, it would feel really weird, it would feel off. But this feels li like, like really well framed, the sense of scale is there. So I just wanted to show again that uh, you can use a longer lens, but you have to really know what you're doing. You have to use it right. So here's another one by LW, um, ArtStation. And this one, uh, very wide again. You can definitely tell that this is wide lens. It's lowered down, so good use of camera. They also notice there's no blur in this and definitely strong, strong image. And so here's another one by uh, Steph Stephen, can't pronounce his surname, sorry about that. Uh, and again, no blur, pretty wide lens and really good, um, good composition here. So again, just keep that in mind. And lastly, we have one by Emil Scriver. And this is um, really good, really good uh, use of uh, lens again and just no blur in the background. Rather, rather than using blur, he's using um, volumetric fog, which is the right way to go. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's take a look at a practical example. Uh, let me just set this. Okay, so I have this scene here. And it's like these big robots, and I want it to feel really big, right? Uh, I, want the, I want the tiny little people at the bottom here to feel really small. Well, it's not working because the camera I'm using, if you if I look at this, is like a really far away camera. It's a really, really long lens here. Um, and if you look at the camera settings, it's a 200 millimeter focal length. So let's see what happens if I actually switch to my other camera, my wide angle camera, camera wide angle. See the difference? That's a massive difference. And suddenly you've got a sense of scale. You've got the camera feels closer. The robot feels closer, more intimidating. Just just comparing the two here. That feels boring. It feels kind of weird. It feels like a toy robot, right? But if you switch back to the other one, it feels like a giant massive thing, like something from Pacific Rim. Uh, at least to me. So it's not perfect, but like I'm just trying to show you the difference the simple camera uh, lens change can do. So just for comparison, the the wide angle lens has a lens setting of, oh, I've lost it now. Here it is. The wide angle, it's got a 25 millimeter lens, while the other one here has got a 200 millimeter lens. And just that one change, does so much to improve the image. So I really 
wanted to just talk about how like how how important it is that you think about your camera it's not just a it's not just a slider that's there that you can just change when you feel like it. you really have to think about okay how do i want this scene to feel do i want it to feel big and like lots of space do i want it to feel more closer and intimate like like a 200 millimeter lens is what you would use for a portrait or something someone like 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 a like a character render really close up with a really blurred out background um uh, it just it doesn't work for like a massive big scene it can work if you use it right like all these there's nothing like that is set in stone you can obviously break these rules but just as a general rule it's um often a lot better to use a wide lens and if you kind of keep that stuff in mind while you're working on on your scene on a larger scene like all of these examples like outdoors if you keep those things in mind it might really help to yeah just to get it to the next level so uh, i hope this helps you if you're busy working on something like this um, i'll see you in another video Thank you.